but nobody seems to understand my family. I don't want an older man. All men my age or older are old. I took care of my husband for five years. I do not want to do that again. He's just a slick talker. And you're looking at this picture of a really nice looking young man. And the other one I'm talking to, he's a captain of a, of a cruise ship. He taught me about phone sex. I had never done it in my life and I'll never do it again. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. I'm 79 years old. Several of them told me I looked more like I was 50 than 79. You don't think it sounds far-fetched though? That he's in the middle of battle and texting you? Well, if it's at all possible, I'd like you to find out if they're really who they say they are. I really didn't want to spend the rest of my life alone. On today's episode, we speak to a woman named Sharon who has had terrible luck finding a man online. She has sent money to over 10 men online and still hasn't met one in person. Sharon's online dating has ruined her relationship with her family, she's lost her car, and has even been visited by the FBI. She's still hopeful that she will meet a man on one of these dating sites. Let's see if we can get some answers for Sharon. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Sharon Thornell. I'm 79 years old. I'm an amateur artist. I'm a basket maker. I'm retired on social security. Okay, I hate to admit this, but I have talked to at least eight, nine scammers. I'm very mad at myself for it. I was married for 49 years. I was working in town and he was working out in the oil fields and he acted like he was just too busy to talk to me. It lacked a lot of the love, the touching, the caring. And then he got Parkinson's and I was his caregiver. He was totally bedridden when he died. I had to do everything for him. He hated it. I hated it. But that I think is why I went looking for somebody that could show a little, more, a little more compassion, a little more love. In 2019, Sharon's husband passed away. She was left lonely and decided to move in with her son. This is when everything started. She opened up an account on the dating site Match.com. Through the app, she matched with the first man. His name was Roberto, and he had a, a business, supposedly. We talked while I was staying with my son. The guy was supposed to be 70 years old, so that's fine. He sold his business to a place, somebody over in Dubai. Well, of course, he got to Dubai. They had taxed him. He didn't know he was going to get taxed for this. And he wanted $36,000. Well, that's uh, completely out of my range. And I called him a scammer, and he got mad, and he called me a bunch of names, and I haven't heard from him since. The next one was Michael, I think. He was working in Australia. Young, good looking, funny. And we were just friends to start out. And then he started getting romantic. He taught me about phone sex. I had never done it in my life and I'll never do it again. But well, I lied about that too. I have done it since. Um, God. He spent the money he was supposed to pay his workers on supplies and the supplies haven't come and his workers want their money and the government's after him and they shut him down. And then he's telling me he can't pay for his motel room. He doesn't have any food to eat. He's having to beg over at the restaurant next door. I'm a softy and if somebody's in that kind of shape, I'm going to help him. I think I sent him $2,600. It just, he just got worse. And when I'd send him that money, I thought you were really stupid. So I ended that one. Sharon blocked and cut ties with Roberto and Michael, but she didn't give up on finding true love online. She deactivated her account on match.com 
and decided to try her luck with the dating app Our Time. That's when she was contacted by two more men. Then I met this other guy. He was supposedly in Turkey to collect his dead wife's inheritance. The will said that any woman that would marry him and raise the grandchild, <laughs> they would give him $400 million. I did send him $1,200. And then they, they contacted me back and they said, well, that's just the beginning. We need $5,000 to finish this. Well, that was the end of that. Then there was one. What the heck was his name? Thompson. He wanted to help me. So he made two payments on my car. Well, I thought, well, maybe he really does want to help me. Then he wanted to straighten up my bank account. Oh, how stupid I was. So I let him in my bank account. I let him in my Verizon account. He took the last $300 I had in my bank account, bought five iPhones with it, and I'm still being done for those. I gave him everything. My account, my routing number, my account number, my Verizon account number. The thing is that the two payments he paid on my car, as soon as he bought those phones, it was pulled back out and I was overdrawn, overdue on my car and overdrawn on my bank account. And I owed $5,000 in telephones. I did tell him that he was a scammer and that I was gonna get the cops on him. And he said, well, I'm sending two big black Nigerians to take care of you. He didn't scare me. He's not gonna send people there to murder me over $5,000. I don't think so. When Sharon's son found out she was sending money to men online, it sparked an argument between the two. And then we got in a big fight over me talking to men on the internet. So I rented a car. My sister was out here in Oregon. My niece is here in Oregon. My niece said I could come over here and stay as long as I wanted. Before she knew it, she had more men messaging her through her Facebook account. Okay, his name was Stone, Stone Brittany. He was another young one with a young daughter. Oh, the first thing he did, he sent me $2,500 and wanted me to buy Bitcoins with it. So I did, but I did it in a coin me machine. He was sending me money in the post office, cash. I think altogether probably $50,000. But I'm so stupid, I was putting it in my bank account through the ATM machine in the bank started asking questions. And they said, when you put that much cash in there, we have to know where it's going and what's going on. Well, where it was going was to his different Bitcoin wallets. Well, my daughter-in-law went through everything with them. I gave her all the paperwork I had. I gave her the envelopes I had that the money came in. She made copies of everything and she gave it to the FBI. They said that since I cooperated with them, they weren't gonna do anything to me. Now I could have gone to prison. That was the end of that. I didn't talk to him anymore. They called the FBI on me. They tried to take away my independence. They wanted me to sign papers so that they could have access to my money and everything I had, and I wouldn't do it. Once the FBI was involved, it forced Sharon to block Stone Brittany. But guess what, Seekers? She started chatting with three more men through TikTok. She believes one of these men have to be the real deal. Then I met this other guy on TikTok. But I went ahead and talked to him. He has most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. I'm interested in you. I think you're a beautiful woman. Age is just a number. If you're that young and I'm this old, in 10 years, I'm going to be a really old lady. And you're still going to be a young man. Well, he kept insisting. That doesn't make any difference. I really like you. And then he told me, well, in order to talk to you, you'll have to pay my uh, management 1800 and some dollars. Well, that's starting to sound a little funny, but then he told me he paid, they really wanted 3000 something, but he paid 2000 of it. So all I needed to pay was 18 something. So I'm not rich. I sent $550 and I told them they would have to wait for the rest. And we talked for a solid month waiting for this other money to come in. 
he's just a slick talker. And you're looking at this picture of a really nice looking young man. And the other one I'm talking to, he will be back in Portland on Monday. If he shows up here as a real person, I might have something to do with him, but he's gonna have to show up in person. Portland's not that far from where I am. If he shows up here in, a, in person, I'll believe him. And that's what I've told him. And the other one I'm talking to, his name is Van Millie. He's 55 years old. He wants to start a hospital when he retires, which he says is going to be in nine months when he finishes this contract. He jumped right in immediately to all this. I love you. I'm falling in love with you. Blue crap. And I keep telling him, you want to talk to me? Don't say those things. So he has knocked it back. He is the person in the photos on his TikTok. And I am still talking to him. But nobody seems to understand my family. I don't want an older man. All men my age or older are old. I took care of my husband for five years. I do not want to do that again. Sharon reached out to us. She uh, has been speaking to 10 men. Um, I think two of them are current ones, eight, the eight remaining or, you know, a long time ago. But um, those two new men that she's talking to, she's falling in love with them. So uh, she wants us to look into them and see what's going on. So within all these 10 men, each time she gets into these misunfortunate events. Yeah. Like the FBI getting involved, getting your car. Her family was trying to like take a hold of her finances and get basically like power of attorney over her. Yeah. Um, she refused, but I mean, you know, given the fact that she's t talked to so many men, I could see where, where they, were, they were coming from. In one relationship, she's getting scammed, she's sending money, and then in another relationship, she's able to identify it's a scammer. Our search team was able to find the true identity of every man Sharon was interested in. We used our reverse image search on our website, socialcatfish.com. A few days later, we sat down with Sharon to go over everything we had found. Make sure you stick around until the end. We'll break down everything we found out about the three men Sharon was waiting to meet in person. We ran them through our, our website, socialcatfish.com. It took a little while to find matches, but we did end up with a match. Tyler is not Tyler, Sharon. Sharon, are, are you going to continue the online date? I don't know. There is no dating in person here. If you've made it this far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. We appreciate you so much. What are you hoping to find out today? Well, since I got that stupid email from uh, Quilly Glover's uh, management, I'm hoping you found out where the heck they are, and I mean, I never talked to him on the phone, but his typing, his English was good. I still think there's a good one out there someplace. Why exactly do you think Tyler is who he claims to be? He has not asked me for money. He is not romancing me. I actually think he is in the military because, I don't know, he'll be on there and then he goes away and I ask him why you know it could be for 10 hours I ask him where did you go he says I'm fighting a war so I don't know I don't know if there's a war in Sudan or not you don't think it sounds far-fetched though that he's in the middle of battle and texting you no because if uh, if they've got a camp there or whatever you want to call it um, it's possible. I was married to two husbands that were in the military. So, it's possible. He just doesn't strike me as, as that kind. So let's get into this because since you brought up Van, um, we did some research. We wanted to look into Van's identity. 
We have the whole entire search department looking for answers for you. Um, I know that you've had a list of of people that you had been dating or created friendships with that you're talking to online, you wanted to verify their identities. So Van Milly was actually one of the men that right away we knew who he was. That was one that we were for sure. The man in the image is known as Dr. Kareem Bikmas, and he's a brain and ner nerve surgeon. He's actually one of the, the people with the most stolen images. He's on the top list. That poor guy, he's a victim too, always has his images stolen, always has women falling in love with his images, then they're always reaching out to him on social media. He even has social media accounts that say, this is not me at all. So unfortunately that does happen to him quite often. Do you typically connect with younger men? Cause he, he's, that's who seems to always contact me. Very few have been my, close to my age. And I even had it on my TikTok. I didn't want anybody contacting me younger than 68 years old. But they all were, most of them were younger. They tell me, and I even had a woman tell me on TikTok that I don't look my age. They think I'm younger than I am. I'm 79 years old. Several of them told me I looked more like I was 50 than 79. A year old guy contacting me, did not think he was contacting anybody that much older than him. I've been in the medical field for a long time, mostly natural medicine. I don't care for doctors too much, <laughs> but I've been to school for a lot of stuff. And I don't smoke. I quit smoking 33 years ago. I don't drink. I don't do much of anything anymore. Well, that's good. You're taking care of your health. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about Quilly. Is that what you want to talk about? <laughs> we DM'd him and he replied. It seems like he's a little frustrated with the scammers using his photos online. So he chose not to participate. Which is understandable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure this happens to him all of the time. After being scammed with his photos, I don't even think he's good looking anymore. So Sharon, let's move on to, to Tyler. Okay. That he's supposed to be in the Sudan. He's in the Marines. He's 50. He's around my kid's age because that was one thing we got in an argument over. He's from Texas. I did learn that. Sharon, we looked into Tyler. We ran him through our, our website, socialcatfish.com. It took a little while to find matches, but we did end up with a match. Tyler is not Tyler, Sharon. His name is Mike. He is a chief petty officer from the US Navy, uh, and he's from Texas. <laughs> this one really fooled me because he hasn't pulled any of the crap that all the others did. He's not on an offshore oil rig. He's not a contractor. He's not a uh, engineer. Sharon was positive that Tyler had to be who he claimed to be. She was so sure about this guy, she didn't even want us to look into him. But you could tell she took the news about him being a fake account pretty rough. Do you see why I wanted to look this guy up for you? Yeah, but I did a reverse image search on him too, and I never came up with a direct match. You've been in communication with all of these different men, young, old, um, black, mm -hmm. white, right? All of these guys are all fake. I really thought he was real, but it doesn't matter. I shut off my TikTok. I don't even go on Facebook. Nope, I just gave up. I really didn't want to spend the rest of my life alone.
then. It's all right. Look, Sharon, no, there's nothing wrong with talking to people online. Unfortunately, there are a lot of scammers out there. There are a lot of people stealing images from other people. There's a lot of catfishes. But, you know, you came to us and we were able to figure out everyone's identity, most everyone's identity on the list and provide you with answers. We're here today to share a new tool with you that you could use to help verify, you know, right off the bat, is this person a scammer or not? Because unfortunately, you just have to weed these people out. Can I ask you if you can show me? So when we built and fraud it, we wanted to make this tool accessible for every single person. We will have a paid version, but we wanted to give the bulk of the tool away to for free for somebody that could actually use it to protect themselves. So in Sharon's case, basically what happened is she was talking to this guy online, he sent her some money for a car payment, and then asked her to take the rest of the money and put it into an ATM machine. So basically we took the message, we put it into our scam chat checker tool, the unfraud it tool, you hit analyze message, it will read the message and it understands that this is a common uh, romance scam from you by using romantic language and promises. So if you want access, go to unfraudit.com, hit the yes, I want access button. There'll be a pop-up that asks for name and email address. We're gonna start letting people on today when the video launches at the end of the day. This will be a free tool to use initially and then we'll have some freemium features later down the road that people can pay extra for. Now let's get back into the video. Big learning lesson in this is being realistic when you're dating online too. Like I said, it would be nice to not have to go through all the crap they feed you before you block them. <laughs> I mean, obviously your whole family was right about every single guy you've talking that you've been communicating yeah. with, right? I admit that, but yes. <laughs> Does it make you want to call them up and, mm -hmm. and talk to them? No. Sharon, are, are you going to continue to online date? I don't know. There is no dating in person here. I don't know anybody. I don't go anyplace. Sharon, have you thought about investing some time in, in some hobbies or joining a club or a group? I've looked for the kind of club I would be at. I can't find one here. What type of club are you looking for? I'm an artist. I oh, I do have a hobby. I have a couple of hobbies. I just can't seem to get into them lately. So what type of art? I do pencil art. I do watercolors. I've got oils. I've got gouache. I've got acrylics. So maybe we can get you connected with some art groups in Oregon. Well, they'd have to be right here in Sweet Home because I don't have a car. After revealing everything to Sharon, we knew we had to get her active to help take her mind off this. We are now looking into finding some online and local art groups in her area. There might be a guy out there that's younger, um, that's fit, and, and, and he's everything that you want. I just want you to just be realistic with, with some of the situations like uh, that, that these men are saying that they're in, right? Like the battlefield, um, you know, I need money for my son. I need, these are all huge red flags and, and you're educated, you're smart, you're a smart woman. You know, I think this is just something for you to do right now. But the thing is, is you're blocking out the real men and the real world. That's the issue. You're spending too much time talking to these guys online. Well, if there really was one online, I wouldn't believe him anyway now. If you do continue to online date, we will be here. Even if you're out there trying to make a new friendship, you know, use the unfrauded tool, give yourself some peace of mind before you enter any new relationships, friendships, whatever it is. Okay, my only problem with that, I have been on several dating things too. But when I put in my age and that I want them at a certain range close to my age, I swear to every one of those men at 70 years old look like they're 90. Okay, because you look so fabulous at your age, I think you're gonna have to adjust the age range to 60 to 70, you know, I mean. They all say age doesn't matter, you know. I tell them, yes, it does. Think 10 years from now. 
I will be 89 years old and you'll be 65 or you'll be maybe 70. It does make a difference. But they all sweet fuck you, right? <laughs> the fake men. Those are the fake <laughs> men. Yes. Those, those are the scammers. <laughs> if, the, if he's half your age, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't get a man half your age, but just be aware, right? Yeah. And just know that that's a red flag. Yes, thank you. But yeah, I know enough not to believe them anymore now. But Tyler did get me. That's too bad. He's too young anyway, but he was a friend. Sharon, he's so he's fake. Let's just you're gonna block him, right? Yeah, I am. Just stay vigilant, okay? All right. All right. Don't forget the program so I can catch him before I get in trouble. We got uh -huh. you. Thanks for watching everyone. We release new videos every Wednesday. If you are trying to reach out to us to verify someone you're talking to online, or maybe your friend or family member needs an intervention, you can reach out to us by emailing us at sharemystory@socialcatfish.com. Thanks for watching.